Shalom and welcome to Biblical Faith with Sam Peek. We invite you to join us as Sam brings a study in the Torah from the Jewish sages. And now our speaker, Sam Peek. Malachem, peace upon you. Welcome to our program. Stay with us for a little while. We're going to continue what we've been doing, uh, what we've been introducing to you, the Aleph Beit. We want to look at the Hebrew alphabet from Aleph, the first letter, to Tav, the last letter. Uh, in the last program we just started, we got about halfway through a passage in the Talmud, uh, in, uh, I believe it's Shabbat, uh, uh, Shabbat uh, hold on, let me make sure, Shabbat uh, 104a, uh, for those of you who have access to a Talmud, you might want to look at this, uh, that's speaking about the, the, ex, uh, the exegesis, or, the, or, the, or the, an, a uh, teaching that was given actually by children, by youngsters, in uh, a study hall one day. We want to pick up where we left off. We covered, I think, the first 12 letters uh, of the Hebrew alphabet, and now we want to try to finish it in this program. Okay, let's go back to the board. We, we have to do board work in this, and our last lesson is still up here on the top, on, on those first letters, and we will come back to this later on. The next letter that we need to talk about is actually the letter Mem, Oish, I broke the chalk already. The letter Mem. And there are certain letters in Hebrew that have a beginning form, and then they have what's called a final form. Mem is one of those. And we see that its final form looks like this, looks very much just like a box. Okay? All right. So Mem. Now, what did they say that, that this taught us? They, they speak of this here. You see, one of the mems, the, the, the initial mem, is open. It has an open space in it here. You can see it. But the final mem is closed. Well, in every one of these things, by the way, uh, they are giving to us in, in a very short form in Hebrew words that begin with these letters, okay? Here they talk about how the open mem, the open mem represents mamar patuak. Now, patuak means open, uh, an open statement. Uh, uh, mamar is from a, from a teaching uh, that is open, that is revealed, that we can see. So this is revealed teaching. Now, <laughs> the closed mem represents mamar uh, satum, mamar satum, and that means concealed teaching. So in, in all of, and actually in the Aleph Beit itself, as well as in all of the scripture, there is open teaching and there is concealed teaching, all right? This comes to us from the Mem. Let's strike right on, because the next letter is a noon, and it also has a final form. This is, this is uh, the regular form of the letter, and this is the final form of the letter, okay? So they ask the question, well, what does the noon come to teach us? And they look at this one, the first one. It is bent. Do you see it? how it is bent, all right? The bent noon, and this one is a straight noon. It's just really just a straight line. Okay, that if a faithful person, a faithful person, and they get this from the word neman, faithful person. Oh, by the way, we have to back up over here. Revealed teaching. meant to do this and forgot it, and concealed. Okay, now back to the noon. If a faithful person, Neman, is humble, is bent, do you see? They're, they are saying if a faithful person, from the word in Hebrew, Neman, which begins with this letter and ends with this letter, by the way, if a faithful person is bent, then, uh, then he will become an erect, <laughs> a standing faithful person in the world to come. Okay? So on this side, if a faithful person is bent, then in the world to come, uh, he will become unbent. He will become erect, this, this person of faith. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to the very next one, and the next one is a pair, and it's Samek and Ayin. Now, Samek, 
actually in Hebrew we would just make it as a circle, but we'll, we'll try to make it a little better than that, okay? A samik and an ayin. Samik and ayin. They, they tell us that this teaches that one should support the poor. Now, we've already seen this already, and they come from this uh, uh, simok an, aniyim, which, mean, which that's exactly what it means. But another version, uh, another teaching of this, and by the way, it doesn't bother me. Uh, like somebody says, oh, we, we've already said that before. We're going to do that in here, in here too, and it, it bothers them a little, and they find another meaning. But it doesn't bother me so much because it's not like that we don't have to be reminded more than once of something that is very important to God and something that is really a part of his nature. Okay? So support the poor is okay here, just like kindness to the poor back up here in the Gimel Dalit. But another teaching of this is that we should devise, I say, make, that we should make memory aids, simanim, signs really is what it's saying, to aid us in the study of the Torah. In other words, to enable us to remember it. So this is what they put here, that we should, we should make memory aids, ways, ways to remember the Torah, what we learn from the Torah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The next one, is a pay, and a pay also has a, an initial and a final form. This is the initial, and we need to put a dot here to make it a pay. If we don't have the dot, then it takes the F sound. It's a fay, okay? And this is the final form. Now, here's what the, actually the word, that, uh, you see, every one of these letters also is a word in Hebrew. Pay itself means mouth, okay? So they come to tell us that the bent pay and the straight pay allude to an open mouth. This is an open mouth. An open mouth. And the straight pay is a closed mouth. Okay. An open mouth and a, and a closed mouth. Now look what they, what they get from this. What they get from this is that they give an example. When no one better is available to expound upon the Torah, you yourself should open your mouth and do so. But if there are more qualified people than you, in other words, if there's a big rabbi there, uh, if there's a sage there, someone you know that obviously knows more than you do, you should close your mouth and remain silent. It's a very, <laughs> I could actually, we could, we could spend a lot of time and harp on this, a lot of time. Uh, uh, but this is something that, that, that uh, uh, it would do us all <coughs> to get a hold of, <laughs> really and truly. Uh, I think uh, uh, sometimes we waste a lot of time uh, uh, when people uh, don't want to be quiet and don't want to actually listen to a, a great teacher of the Torah, and I'm not talking about myself there, I'm talking about great, great rabbis uh, uh, who sometimes we, <laughs> we tend to waste their time uh, by talking over them. But anyway, an open mouth and a closed mouth uh, is, is the lesson of the letter pay. Now we come to the tzadi. Now we have a bent tzadi and we have a, we have a straight tzadi. It has a final form also. This is its final form. This is its initial form. The tzadi. <laughs> the bent tzadi and the straight tzadi. Now, once again, they, they talk about how that this teaches that if a righteous person, and a righteous person is a tzadik, it begins with this letter, uh, is humble. In other words, he is bent, you see, he, like he is on his knees. He is bent. Uh, he will become an erect, standing, standing erect, righteous person. By the way, there is a... There is a teaching here upon the study that will be very interesting. Do you see how it looks like a tree with a branch? It's, it's very interesting, and uh, I'm just what I'm trying to do is throw some bait for you. Eventually, we will be to the study. It's a long way down in the series, but it's a very interesting teaching. Okay, 
In the Talmud, they say, but this is identical to the early te earlier teaching of the bent and the straight faithful person, the Naaman, back to the, the, the letter noon. Scripture means to stress. Now, this is the way they look at that. This is what we were talking about a while ago, that it is praiseworthy for one to continue adding more humility to whatever humility he has. From here we see that the Torah was given to those with exceeding submissiveness. Now, what are they saying? They're saying that, let's, let's go back down here and find the noon. The noon is here. They're saying that this teaching is repeated of a faithful person who is bent, will become a faithful person in the world to come, but he will no longer be bent. He will be erect. In other words, humility. Not humiliation, but humility. Uh, a way of thinking and a way of putting that thinking into your life. Uh, they're saying the reason that this coming to here is, re is repeated, sadiq, righteous person, the reason that is repeated is because it, we need to. We are human beings and we need to remember this and we need to add to it. We need to put the tzaddik on top of the noon. We need to put uh, uh, righteousness on top of faithfulness. Uh, we need to put bent on top of bent. And because of that, then we will be straight. Straight in the world to come. We'll just write that there to, to remind us, okay? All right. Let's go uh, to the next one, Kuf. Kuf stands alone by itself, Kuf. And this stands suddenly, all of a sudden, in the clear blue, out of the clear blue again. Kuf stands for the Holy One. Blessed is He. Kuf is the, is the beginning letter of the word uh, Kadosh. It means holy in and of itself. And uh, this is all that they say about this about this letter. Suddenly, I, to me, I, I think it's important because when we began the study of the Aleph Bay, we saw learn understanding, kindness to the poor, and then the Holy One comes into the picture. He comes into the picture because if we learn understanding and, and are kind to the poor, then the Holy One will sustain us. He will be gracious to us. He will be good to us. He will give us a heritage. He will crown us in the world to come. Now, when we, when we turn this corner, we have a new series of things that are going on. We have revealed teaching in the Word of God and concealed teaching. We have faithfulness. We must be a faithful person. We must be bent. We must be humble. Do you say humble or humble? I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. We're in Texas. Uh, and, and because of that, it will, it will make you an erect person in the world to come. We must actively work, really, uh, uh, actively work on devising ways to study the Torah that make it available to us, that make it, put it in our heads and in our hearts, okay? Then an open mouth and a closed mouth, we must develop character traits that that are absolutely uh, essential in order to operate in, in the world of Torah. Uh, because this is what I'm trying to, to really give to you. I'm trying to give to you the feeling uh, uh, of what it means to be a sage of Israel, the feeling of what it means to be a Jewish student of the Torah, especially in the first century, in the first century when Yeshua was there. And we get more and more of a feeling of knowing his way of life and the things that were going on around him. And uh, hopefully it's helpful. Okay. Then we have the, the repetition of a bent tzaddik, but now it's a, a tzaddik. It's a righteous person. Not First it was faithful, but now it's a righteous person. It's what the tzaddik stands for. And a bent tzaddik, one who is humble, one who has humility uh, in this world, will be a straight Tzaddik, he will be an upright, standing upright Tzaddik, upright righteous person in the world to come. And now suddenly in the middle, or at the end of this, this line of teaching from the Aleph Beit, comes the Holy One again, blessed is he. He stands in the middle. How do we do, how do we accomplish all of these things? Revealed teaching, concealed teaching, studying the Torah from the Holy One, blessed is he. How do we become a faithful person in our life? And how will we become 
an erect, faithful person in the world to come. From the Holy One, blessed is he. How do we learn the art of knowing when to open our mouth and when to shut it? From the Holy One, blessed is he. How do we become righteous in this life and, and, and remain bent in this life so that we will be a straight, righteous person in the world to come? This comes from the Holy One, blessed is he. He must appear occasionally in order to remind us that all of this is from him, every bit of it. Okay, let's try to finish uh, with what we have here. Kuf stands for the Holy One, blessed is he. Now we come to the letter Resh. Resh in Hebrew. And Resh stands for a wicked person. Rasha. Rasha in Hebrew. A wicked. We'll just put the wicked here. Resh stands for wickedness, for, for the wicked person. Now, oh, Oy vey. I'm going to have to move it. <laughs> I'm going to have to move it back here. Excuse me. We need to put it right here because it interacts with the Holy One. Blessed is He. A wicked person, Rasha. Because the very first question they ask is why is the face of the Kuf? Now, the face of the Kuf. This would be the foot, the leg of the kuf. But the face of the kuf is here, okay? And they ask, why is the face of the kuf turned away? It faces the opposite direction of the resh. Why is that? Because the Holy One, blessed is He, says, I cannot bear to look at the wicked one. And why does the crown of the kuf, and the crown is this little part that's sticking out here, why is it pointing toward the resh? Uh, they say, because the Holy One, blessed is He, says, if the wicked person repents, if the wicked person, if the Rasha repents, if the Resh will repent, then I will bind upon him a crown like my own. Isn't it? So to me, this is exceedingly interesting. I hope you're catching, uh, really, look, for an alphabet to actually be designed in its very design to teach us these lessons to me is an amazing thing. Uh, and I hope it is to you. Okay. Now they ask uh, uh, another question. Why is the leg of the kuf suspended? Uh, talking about the kuf here. Why, why is it suspended? Why is it hanging in air, in other words? And, and their answer is, is because if the resh, if the wicked person repents, in fact, I made the, the leg of the kuf too long, we need to shorten it. If the wicked person repents, turns back to the Holy One, in other words, he can come in through this opening. He can, he can uh, reconnect with God by means of the opening. Uh, but let him ascend through there, they say, the open bottom of the kuf. This supports Resh Lakish's view for Resh Lakish. Now, Resh Lakish is a rabbi of the Talmud. He, uh, because Resh Lakish said, Why does Scripture say, For the scorners he has scorn, but to the humble he gives favor? And this is a quotation from Proverbs 3 and verse 34. If someone comes... Okay, okay, it takes me a second to make the translation here. If someone comes to defile himself, they open the way for him. If one comes to purify himself... They assist him. So what are they saying? They're talking about repentance. If a wicked person wants to repent, uh, uh, then he has a way to repent. He must. Now look, the face of the resh is also turned away from the kuf. In other words, it's pointing in the opposite direction. He must turn around and go back towards the Holy One. And then the Holy One will assist him, will help him come up this way and back into the presence of God or into the presence of God through this opening in the bottom of the kuf. Uh, very, very interesting terminology they're using. Okay, now let's continue on. We only actually have a couple of more letters. A sheen. Yes. And the sheen will be very short. Now, I know this is a sheen that most of you are saying. This is, of course... Uh, we know stands for Shaddai. It's one of the names of God. Uh, and uh, it's even on the mezuzah, you know, that you put on your doors. 
uh, uh, a commandment to the Jewish people to put a mezuzah on the, on the doors of their house and upon their gates. And, uh, but in the Talmud portion, this, they come and they say, they look at the sheen, and they say something that's uh, kind of amazing because they say, the sheen stands for falsehood. Now this brings up a very important thing, which in Hebrew is sheker, sheker, falsehood. It begins with this, with this letter. This, this brings up an amazing thing that we're going to find in the Hebrew language over and over and over again. And that thing is simply this, is that we will have a word uh, that, that uh, in its original straightforward sense means a good thing. But we also have the same word in Hebrew, uh, depending upon its usage in the sentence, that can mean the exact opposite. In other words, a word in Hebrew can have exact opposite meanings. It is going to depend upon uh, where it's at in the sentence and the context that it's being used in. And it's really going to depend on if it, if it is being used in its straightforward sense or if it's being used in a... In a uh, uh, a uh, opposite meaning sense, uh, or in other words, not straightforward, a, a perversion, if you will, of it. And we will have quite a few examples of that. And, and we run into it all the time in Hebrew, where one word can mean two opposite things depending upon the motive and depending upon uh, uh, the, uh, the thought pattern and everything else of the speaker, okay? So it's not surprising to me that we come to this sheen and we find that it stands for falsehood. It stands for sheker, which means a liar, which means falsehood. Okay? Now, we have one final letter, and this is the tav. This is the tav. And this, the tav, stands for truth. Now, if we write truth in Hebrew, it looks like this. Emet. Emet. Okay? So, Tav stands for truth. Now, they ask, they ask an interesting question. They say, why are the letters of falsehood, Sheker, and I guess we better write that one also. Why are the letters of falsehood juxtaposed? Why are they up against the Tav, the letter of truth? Uh, let's, let's answer the question. Uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. Why are the letters of falsehood juxtaposed? Oh, okay. Now I see what they're saying. Sometimes, you know, I'm dense. It takes me a minute to figure it out. Uh, why are the letters of falsehood juxtaposed? In other words, backwards. You see? Sheen, sheen, kuf, resh. Yeah, they go backwards. Sheen, we have sheen, resh, kuf, but they are, but they are, not, in, they are not in a forward order. They're in a backward order from sheen, kuf, resh, okay? However, let me show you this. The letters for truth are in order. In fact, they're not just in any order because here we have an aleph, an aleph, okay? That is the very first letter. Here we have a mem. That, by the way, is the middle letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And here we have a tav. That is the final letter. They're spread out over the complete alphabet, all right? So this is the question. Why are the letters of Sheker, falsehood, juxtaposed, in other words, going backwards in the Aleph Beit, while the letters of truth, emet, they are spread out and, and from the beginning to the end. In fact, they're beginning letter, first letter, middle letter, final letter. That ought to tell us something about the Aleph Beit. It is truth, all of it. It's, in, it's an inclusive thing. Okay. Because falsehood, oh, they say because falsehood is common, and truth is uncommon. Hmm. Falsehood, the letters are all standing next to each other, but in a backward way. But who would come up with the idea that the first letter and the middle letter and the final letter of the entire alphabet would form the word for truth? This is an unusual thing. Falsehood is common, and truth is uncommon. Now, it asks another question. Let's go back for just a moment. Why do the letters for falsehood, sheker, why do they stand, why do they stand on one foot? Do you see what they're saying? This, when it talks about how a letter stands, we have to imagine, and we'll do it right here. 
we have to imagine lines on the page, like so. And this letter stands on this line, okay? But we see the sheen stands on one foot. The kuf stands on one foot. The resh stands on one foot, all right? All of those things are right here. Sheen, one foot. Kuf, one foot. Resh, one foot. However, when we come to the word for emet, for truth, look at this. The aleph stands on two, two feet. The mem stands on a long base, on a big foot. <laughs> and the tav stands on two feet. Okay? Now, so why is that? Why do the letters of falsehood stand on one foot while the letters of truth are like a brick? They have a brick solidness to them. Because truth stands firm while falsehood is very shaky. Do we get that? I think that's, uh, that, that, that's a good one. Okay. That kind of rounds out our study, from the, at least from the Talmud, this very classical passage from the Talmud in Shabbat, uh, the Shabbat uh, 104a, uh, that gives us a basic background to the Aleph Bait. What we want to do in the very next program is we want to begin studying the first letter, the very first letter, Aleph. And uh, then we are going to go each individual letter through the entire alphabet and get glean a little bit of information from here and from there and from the great sources of the sages in Judaism uh, to learn some things. And we are going to see that these things are, are going to be very much a key to help us to understand lots of scripture. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you do or if you don't. It's okay. And uh, are, are any questions you might have. I can't always answer your questions in the mail. Uh, I just, uh, there's just too many of them. But from time to time, we'll try to bring them to the television program and, and get some of them answered for you. So that makes you keep watching. That makes you, you know, not miss. Maybe your question will be that day. But anyway, I enjoy you very much, and I thank you very much for joining with me. Shalom Bavraka. Thank you for joining us in our study. If you enjoyed this study and are interested in learning more from the Torah and the sages of Israel, then check us out on the internet at www.bfm101.com or you may contact us toll free at 1-800-639-0169. Our mailing address is Biblical Faith, P.O. Box 2, Abilene, Texas, 79604. Until next time, we wish you Shalom Uvakah, peace and a blessing.